Okay, I've spent the afternoon watching Adam Savage just tested. I didn't realize before I started in that the uh, episodes were like an hour and a half long, but anyways. Um, this week's blog post, I'm just going to do a uh, sketchbook tour, but it's actually not a sketchbook, it's a roll. I've been buying these uh, last couple of months just because I like having everything right in front of me. It's nice being able to see... Like, this is like four different sketchbook pages, right? But instead, I can fit it all in one and keep my thoughts in the same place. If that makes sense? Um, the paper's kind of garbage, but it's cheap. These are like 10, 15 bucks for 18 inches by, I want to say, 10 yards. So 30 feet, which is a lot of space. Um, and I just try to keep these very focused, like each one is for a project. So I have one for like my warrior primates. I have one for a comic I'm working on. And then this was like my note taking um, and a homework role for dynamic sketching and then some other classes as well. I didn't like use it every single week because it kind of depended on what the nature of the assignment was, but I just finished it. So I figured I'd... Uh... Go through and this might be a little bit usually because i draw on every side of the pages in a sketchbook i have to flip it upside down every time i turn the page this one's gonna be a little bit different of a problem where i have to <laughs> re-roll up and down over and over but um one of like the earlier exercises in the extension class was to render uh like metallic surfaces that are uh glossy dull or aged kind of hard to do honestly the hardest part is finding reference it's like a weird thing to like search for and find good just like simple to draw things um, where it's wrapping around a form uh, and then another one is like to do these uh, patching pattern uh, texture effect kind of renders um, the more you do these, the better you get at them. And it's weird because I always feel really confident about these things. And then I go in to do them and it just drives me nuts. So um, these like these really um, train your discipline to not get lazy and really take your time. So you can see on this one, they get really skinny near the edges, these folds. But then near the bottom, they're a lot wider. I can zoom in a little bit. So just like kind of test your discipline to not jump ahead and to be really careful. Um, here's like some gooey soybeans, a netto, I think is what that's called. Anyways, you can always do more of those. I'll probably just keep taking dynamic sketching classes and continue to do them. Um, this week we had uh, Marine Life. And we also, I think, started talking about like imaginative sketching and how to like incorporate that into just your daily workflow. And so uh, it's pretty fun. I think in the lecture, yeah, we drew the sea turtle and then um, Peter was talking about like, what if we used that shell shape as like a, a robot head or a submersible? And uh, I think we also touched briefly on doing like a quick landscape, which we went further into detail later, but um this was i kind of copied along with his demo of imaginative drawing drawing this turtle shell as like a submersible and just kind of like a nice story element to it of it going to explore this big monster in a cave and then uh part of this homework i drew a bunch of fish this week and i drew those in my cottonwood art sketchbook so you've probably seen those before the tan paper and we also had to do some imaginative drawing so we did like a page of like exploration to develop ideas all this is like you know, from my head or, you know, with loose reference and trying to manipulate it. And then we um, thumbnailed. I think you maybe saw that as well. I don't have it nearby, but I drew like a big underwater scene with a bunch of Yeti crabs and a diver. Um, that was good fun. And then it was hands week. I drew so many of them and then I still couldn't really comfortably do them from uh, imagination at the end, but that's okay. It just, you never stop. You just have to draw a couple thousand more hands and eventually it'll be so ingrained in your head how it works and how it looks and all the different relationships. I think that's why it's like one of the most complicated parts of the human body. There's so many different relationships and proportion 
you know, this, this knuckle or this length of finger is longer than this one, but even longer than this one, which is even longer than that one. And then you have the same thing for every part of the finger. And then they also can, they wrap around, you know, like this, and they can also go flat and that changes those relationships. Like there's so many relationships and proportional changes throughout. So it makes them really tricky. So you just have to keep, keep chugging away at them. Um, but I think we specifically were focusing on using props. Um, so these are all very constructed. There's lots of, you know, guidelines drawn in before I do the final. And like some quick shading for form. And uh, yeah, just kept on going. Lots and lots. I, I kind of like these drawings when I look back on them. There's just a certain thing about them that I appealing. And I remember when I was doing them, I didn't like them at all. I was like, these are all so lame. But then I look back and I'm like, oh, these are actually not that bad. And then these are all from imagination. Um, and you can see they're just kind of weird. Um, there's just something off about them. Um, obviously, these are super fantastical, but even like, you know, this, that thumb looks just too, too short, maybe. The wrist is too small. It's just like small things like that. Uh, birds, I'm sure y'all remember this week, uh, I posted a ton of birds on my Instagram, if you follow me there, it was like, I think I drew like 60 hours this week or something crazy, because I just got all these birds done, I did like 10 subjects and some watercolors, and I accidentally did my anatomy final like twice, I did twice as much work as I needed to, so that was annoying, but those are all in my tan sketchbook as well, these are just from my lecture notes, um, I really like the way these are constructed. It's just nice. You can see these are like notes for what I need to do for homework. Then we did airplanes. Also tricky. They're very uh, misleading. It's really easy to draw them too short, but they're actually very long. And we did landscapes. I really liked this week because I'd never really tried it before. And then I started doing it and it was such a blast. And those were also <laughs> just notes. Um, these are a tattoo commission, actually. They wanted um, a Final Fantasy-esque sword for one forearm and then a paintbrush that kind of matched it aesthetically. Um, so I kind of like what I came up with. These are just a bunch of iterations that I sent to them. Um, but I really like this kind of combo here of this like very Bedouin sword, kind of like Arabian styling. And then, um, you know, this like ink paintbrush kind of thing. Um, but they didn't want that. It was too detailed, too much information. Um, and it wasn't just because it was like hatching or anything. It was just like they wanted something really simple. So that was kind of a bummer because I really liked them, but that's okay. That's the nature of it sometimes. Um, I think we ended up going with something kind of more like four. And the paintbrush was basically a really simplified version of this. And I've not seen the tattoos yet. Oops. We did. So I'm in my mentorship, my design thinking class at this point, which I'm still in. Um, some notes on like proportion manipulation. So this is like chimpanzee versus a human, skinny versus uh, larger. Here's some drawings uh, of an Akiti Inu. These are design thinking notes, I believe. Uh, but I also kind of tried to merge it with my other project. So I'm working on a comic right now that is about a dog in Japan. Um, so I was like, all right, I'll combine them. So for the, the homework, we had to study a subject, just like I always do like this, sketch it out, break it down, and then uh, basically determine like the parts and pieces, big, medium, small, you know, all the elements of the drawing um, of the animal graphically. And then do a bunch of iterations where we change the proportions and um, 
try to focus on shape language. So these are supposed to be more square. And keep in mind, I absolutely had no idea what I was doing for the first like 15 or so. So I did a couple extra, but um, it took me a while to get into a groove where I understood what I was actually messing with and playing with. So these are some terrible drawings, but that's okay. Got to get through it. So. Yeah, so I was just kind of like affecting one thing. Like I just made the chest really big. Everything else is the same. Or I made the tail really big. Everything else is the same. The head is really big. Everything else is really small. There wasn't like a good push and pull and like a balance. So if you make something else big, there needs to be kind of a shift in everything else. It's kind of hard to explain, but when you see it and start doing it, it makes a lot more sense. So we're almost to the point where it starts to not be terrible. Um, so here is where I started saying, oh, <laughs> let's shift the legs and the ears and the tail, not just the head and the torso. And the, so it's kind of pushes and pulls. So here, you know, that's like the first iteration that I was like, okay, this actually looks good. This looks like something. Um, and a lot of these just look like other breeds of dogs, like this one kind of just looks like a different breed of dog. But that's because that's all dogs are, is pushed and pulled proportions as they're bred differently. Um, but some of them are a lot more fantastical where I really pushed it. So, and I have some extra pages in here that I just inserted. Um, so this one, you know, it's like a big Pokemon. It's crazy. This one's very blocky, very square shape language. It looks very stocky and sturdy, which are, you know, kind of identifiers you go for by using shape language like that. Um, you know. That's super blocky and stiff. And that's the end of the roll. But then I went, I was out of paper and I wanted to keep drawing in this large format. So I used to draw in a similar, uh, similar nature, I guess. I used to draw on these big sketch pads and a hundred pages of this for like 20 bucks. It's also pretty thin paper. It's nothing special, but it works. And so I started working with this. So I next, I, I went back and found some old drawings that I've done. These are like from January and March. And uh, I just found some pages that didn't have very much on the back. And I reused them. So, sketchbook spanning time here. Uh, this is more triangular shape language. It was really hard for me to not just be super literal. Now I think I'm already better at it three weeks later. But, um super pointy, right? There's like triangles everywhere. It doesn't need to be that literal. Um, just the general shape can be, you know, sharper, more angular. Um, but some of these are fun. Like, I really like this one. It's like a weird, like, dog llama. Um, this little angry pig thing. That one's really interesting. I love how springy it looks. Um, and it's what's cool is, like, you start with shape language and determine, you know, use it to draw a picture and manipulate an image. And then you look at that image and you come up with all these words that describe it. And it gives you further clues on, as to how you can use that shape language, triangle, square, whatever, uh, circle. You can use that shape language to say those things in future designs. So that's like what's really fun about design language is, you know, it's all representational. Um, and it makes you think about like nurture versus nature and like how, but even beyond that, like the actual practice of it is just like, this looks really springy and fast, and it's really pointy. So that's like, if you want to make something that's springy and fast, consider using pointier, more triangular kind of shapes. Interesting to me, at least. Um, now we have a behind me. A couple more iterations. Um, I really like 11. It's fun. 15 kind of looks like a schnauzer again it's really pointy though it's a little too literal you know i don't have to make it just points but it's okay um i think that's all i did for those ones and then i have a circle trying to mix up the tool set i mean it's not really that different but sometimes just like even a different color might spark a different idea it might relate your brain to something else that you've done before um but also like these these mediums all have different speeds like with ink, you have to be a little bit slower and more delicate, put a little more thought into it. But sometimes you want to just go crazy and see what comes out, and that can generate interesting ideas. So I like to just mix around 
use different things. And I did a lot of this stuff um, after the fact digitally, too. That one's cool. You know, I'm also changing the, the posing a little bit, but that kind of comes from the proportioning. This one is kind of terrifying. It's like a pug in a baby suit. Or a baby in a pug suit, rather. I like this one. I like this one. I really like that one. So after this point, I think I chose some of them, and um, it's just a random drawing I did in the intro. I think I chose some of them, and I brought them into digital. I chose one of each of those shape languages, and I brought them into digital, and then I did five more iterations based on that silhouette. Then I picked my favorite of all of those, and I designed like a, a new creature that was um, kind of in like a, th a 3D space instead of just a side view. Um, I posted that also on my Instagram, but that's all. That's like one of the fastest ones yet. I thought it would be longer since it's literally 30 feet of drawing, but um, I guess there was a lot of like really similar drawings that I could talk about all of them at once and also just like a lot of notes, but I said I'd get this out by Wednesday. Here it is, getting it out by Wednesday. Thanks for watching. Um, that's all. Okay, bye-bye.